Hello everyone, welcome back to the homestead and to another farm to table meal and this year's sweet potato harvest. If you are new to our channel, we are a family of nine working on building a home and homestead from scratch debt free on 20 acres here in the Ozarks of Missouri. It's been quite an adventure for us over the past 10 years and we've been sharing our journey on YouTube for the past six and a half or so years. So we post new videos weekly every Thursday and then we also are bringing over old videos from our other channel called Homestead Living um, usually on Tuesdays and the reason we're doing that is because we're going back to just one channel. This channel Thousands of Roots was our original channel years ago right when we were just starting to take off on this channel YouTube shut down our comments and they were actually shut down for two years straight so during that time we started a whole new channel so that we could have comments again and then randomly for no reason at all YouTube reinstated our comments here on Thousands of Roots so we decided to simplify things go back to one channel so rather than let our other channel die we're just trickling over videos from that channel so the, the videos you see coming on Tuesdays are about two years old they are from our other channel and we're trying to line them up so at least they're in the same season as we are currently in so the meal we're sharing in today's video is a meal that we recently had for a gathering of families that got together for a feast of trumpets um, we're going into the fall feast season. Our family keeps the biblical feast because scripture says that it's something we should do throughout our generations forever and ever. And we believe all scripture matters. So for this meal, we had Muscovy. We've got a lot of Muscovies right now. We are trying to sell them, but then we are also beginning to process them to use as meat for our family. So I basically like to just roast a Muscovy the same way I would a whole chicken. Put it in a big pot, lots of salt. I like to put thyme on it as well with a little bit of water in the bottom of the pot and just cook it low and slow for a long time. And for this meal, because I knew we were gonna be gathering with other families earlier in the day before meal time, I decided to use a crock pot for the meal so that way I could just keep it warm once, ooh, wasp. That way we could just keep it warm um, there where we were gathering until it was time to eat. So I cooked everything ahead of time and then put it all into the crock pot. While the Muscovy was cooking, when it got to be about two, two hours before go time, I added a bunch of potatoes and carrots in large chunks, not chopped really small, just kept them pretty large and kind of just layered those around the bird. And then about an hour before go time, I added some onion and garlic um, just sliced up on top of the whole thing. Then right before it was time to go, I brought the whole thing inside and had my crock pot ready and I just scooped out all the potatoes and carrots, put them into the crock pot. Then I got all the meat off of the bird, put that in the crock pot, kind of mixed it up with a little more salt. And then I strained the broth from the whole thing over the top of everything that was in the crock pot. And lastly, just to add a little bit of pepper on top, put the lid on and we were ready to go. We also decided to take some of our homemade salsa to share and a big bag of chips because um, who doesn't like chips and salsa? So that was it. Very simple meal. Just meat, potatoes, some veggies. I used salt, thyme, um, and there was the onion and garlic that we put in to give it flavor and a little pepper and that was it. And we had a great time gathering with friends and we're looking forward to the rest of the fall feast. We are going to be taking a, a bit of a break here on YouTube um, while we go through the fall feast. My parents are also coming from out of state to visit. Um, so I will let you all know about that in next week's video. But now let's move on to this year's sweet potato harvest. Praise Yah, it was our best sweet potato harvest yet. We did harvest them a little bit early this year. Um, but I'm really glad we did because there were a couple that were just starting to crack. If you leave them in the ground too long and you get really heavy fall rains, they tend to split open and then they don't store quite as well. Um, and then the other thing we had um, here in our kitchen garden bed, some kind of underground varmint that was eating through <laughs> some of our sweet potatoes. So we lost a good portion of them to whoever that was. <laughs> uh, so thankfully we were able to get about 70% from that bed. I think the varmint got about 30% of our sweet potatoes. I'm glad we got at least most of them before he did, or she.
guys helping to wash them and put them up on the shelves? Yeah. yeah. Filling the shelves. Good work. Thanks for helping. <laughs> That's a lot of vines. <laughs> yeah. This is, I think, our best sweet potato harvest yet. Ever. To date, huh? Yeah, one of the best for sure. <laughs> you guys liking these sweet tater vines? You're wearing them, big rowing man. Look at you. Oh, they're loving it. That's a treat. <laughs> so fun. It's like having ice cream. Ice cream for cows. Sweet potato vines. <laughs> the calves have some over here. Are you enjoying that? Is that good stuff? Making that? Yum yum. You think they're loving that? <laughs> hey, it's a jungle in the barn now. This is kind of fun. <laughs> That'd be great if this stuff dries well and it's a nice ice cream treat for the cows in the middle of winter. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Good job, Josh. Thank you. We got eight five gallon buckets full. We're curing them on our rocks here in the fruit cellar because it's quite humid and sweet taters like to have humidity for curing. We ran out of shelving, so we've got some over here and another batch over there. So this top rack is all Mirasaki sweet potato. The next two racks are purple sweet potatoes. On the bottom we have some Beauregard here, and then this little bit here is the Mayhan Yam sweet potatoes that didn't do so great because, as you can see there, a bunch of them got attacked by an underground varmint. So about half of those we had to toss out. And then over here we have Covington, kind of hard to see in the light here. And then all these up here are Covington as well. So Covington got attacked a little bit by the underground varmint as well. It was in the same bed as the Mahon yam potatoes. But um, they just produced so much better that we got a much better crop from them, even though we lost some to the underground varmint. <laughs> so I'm super happy with the Covingtons this year. And those Covington sweet potato slips were actually gifted to us. So thank you again to the person who got us those sweet potato slips. I think Covington is definitely a keeper and we hope to be able to grow those every year from now on. Well guys thanks so much for joining us on the homestead again today. Before we go we have a thank you to give. Thank you to the person who got me these organic fruit snacks. Those are gonna be fun for our camping trip huh? Yeah. As always thank you so much to our patrons who make these videos possible. We appreciate you guys and love you so much. Until next time, we pray blessings over you and yours, and whatever you do, do it with your whole heart. <laughs>